you're alive. In Santiago de Chile. Estamos en vivo en su Facebook ahora. Estamos mostrando a la gente allá. Try to get the picture up the road here, or looking down towards downtown from Las Vegas. Oh, we're not gonna. We have to wait for the arrow. Sorry, no, we're returning now. Sean Gillis, thank you for watching. Sean Gillis says the game. Brittany Hamilton, thank you for watching. Street down there. Marvin Coe, thank you for watching. There's an interesting one that when it gets wider as it goes taller. That's an area called Escuela Militar. We're going up a street called Apoquindo. David Brewer, thank you for watching. And this is Alcantara Metro and Alcantara Street, which is a port, another important landmark in this part of Las Montes, Santiago de Chile. The Dadino place has, right there on the left is a little restaurant that has great salads. Make your own salad kind of with the waiter. It's just tremendous. And very good fruit juices. Go with it. And there is the flag of Chile, also known as La Estrella Solitaria or the Lone Star. Todd Niebling, Pastor Todd, thank you for watching. This is. Uh, we're crossing over a square literally tire, the military school on our left there. That's the equivalent if you want to call it that West Point in the United States. Those buildings to the left. Of course it doesn't come close to West Point for many reasons, but it is what it is. Some of these buildings are that's sort of one I think is brand new. I don't remember you seeing it the last time I was up here six months ago, so it was being finished. You'll still see some cranes up ahead. We've got a lot of construction happening in Chile everywhere. This, yeah, this part of the third world country, so to speak, <laughs> which it isn't actually, as we're still an OECD country, top 30 wealthiest in the world. But this goes on for many miles, these kinds of modern architecture structures. Um, and basically quite wealthy people relative to them. In most places in the world, certainly, and most places in Chile, for that matter, there's some construction apartment buildings to the left. Los arquitectos son muy extraños aquí, mira, se te pone cualquier cosa. Es muy bonito. We're looking at that architecture up front, not up ahead, that dimple building. Never seen anything like that. So, I see if I can zoom in on it. We'll be coming close to it shortly, but uh, yeah. Kurt Simpson, thank you for watching. So, like in New York or a lot of other places in the world, if you're in the city here, you can walk just you know, a quarter of a mile any direction and virtually find anything you want, whether laundry or food or pharmacy, you know, you name it. It's all around here. And nothing else is really far away. The nice thing about Las, about Santiago is you can live in the nice part of the town and not have to go near the not nice parts of town ever because the large part is so or the nice part is so large. Uh, there's a huge middle class in Chile. It's at least 65 percent of the population has purchasing power beyond their basic needs, uh, which is a key component of being first you know, more or less a first world country. And I again, I, I think Chile is a marginally first world country. It is technically. But some, this part of Santiago is not the whole country by any means. There's also a nice part of Viña del Mar, uh, not as nice as Santiago in some ways, but it has its own amenities which are superior and views and fresh air and not so many truck, uh, buses like this that are enormous and about to bump into you and traffic jams are it's, it's impossible to get over, get by or get over. It's a little old mall here on the, left, on the right called uh, Apumanque. It's been here for many years. Yeah. It still has a, quite a few shops in it that people go 
to this, this is actually where we are in 1K, but if you look up the left here, all those new buildings you can sort of see behind you is where the new office district is for Santiago. It's kind of hard to tell from here, they're all kind of blocked off, but uh, just dozens and dozens of steel and glass buildings in there housing all sorts of tech companies and other kinds of businesses. Got a Dunkin' Donuts over there. On the left, you see this, all these are apartment buildings. They, they were built up in the last mostly 20 years. Uh, so you have a fair number of people living right here. But up there, you can see some more of the buildings, the offices. And obviously, it's unusual architecture here, this dimple building. Kurt Simpson asks, do they have Texas peat there? Texas peat is a hot sauce, I believe. They don't know. Uh, maybe. They don't like Mexican food here, and they don't particularly like hot food. You come to Chile to get a burrito or a taco, it's going to... Oh, they've got some restaurants, but it's pretty rare. That is an interesting building. I'll have to hand it to the architect. I don't think I've ever seen one where it looks like that dimple. Even this other one straight ahead is kind of interesting, isn't it? Well, Sabah Seth. Thank you for watching. So, Apoquindo Street goes off to the right, and uh, we're going to turn on Avenida Las Contes now. Which goes up to, it's a little bit, it's all pretty exclusive up here, but it may be even a little bit more exclusive as we go up. The president of Chile lives up this way. Kurt um, Simpson says he's disappointed. Not for everybody, I guess. <laughs> Some people need to need to stay in the land of the free too, to fight, make sure you can hold up there and die in the country you were born in. It's a, <laughs> it's a mark of genius and uh, bravery. The rest of us just decide to leave and live a peaceful, free world. Freer world. It's not free here. It's freer though than the United States. Shockingly, as that may sound to some people. Selling these apartments here. That's what that block construction you see on the side. And what was it? The uh, the Heritage Foundation classified Chile as a mostly free country, but even so, it was classified higher than the United States in its uh, freedom. Right. And Chile under Bachelet dropped on the rankings. It was all it was frequently number seven for many years. And then when Bachelet, the last president, took over, it dropped down to like eleventh. It actually went out of the top ten of both the Cato list and the Heritage list. Of course, the, the percentage points that separate positions 5 through 15 are it's, it's any little change moves you up or down. Matthew Smith and Joshua Relia, I don't even know how to pronounce your last name, but thank you for watching. Kurt Simpson says, everything sounded fine till I found out about the lack of hot sauce. <laughs> yeah, they, they, there, there is some, but I don't know about your brand, and they just... What they call ahi here is hot sauce, it's just not the same. I mean, it's, the, the, it might be a, a medium sauce, I would say, up in the U.S., what they call hot here. I mean, I, I've had Mexican hot sauce where you put it, drop it on your tongue and you're on fire. You need to drink a gallon of water. I mean, they don't have that here. So that's what you're talking about. It doesn't exist. Not that I've seen it, anyway. Those palm trees that look kind of straight or funny are... Or cell towers. I don't know if they do palm tree <laughs> cell towers in the U.S. Oh, yeah. They do a little bit, yeah. Okay, okay. They do pine tree cell towers, too. Oh, Phyllis Gillis. Thank you for watching. So this is still Las Condes, and it's uh, developing into a... Oh, every, every year they're adding new, new skyscrapers. People prefer living in apartments here for safety sake because there's so much petty theft in Chile. People break in, but they don't do it in apartment buildings that much. Although little 10-year-old girls have fingers apparently can fit between the bricks real well, and sometimes their dads will send them up to the fifth floor and let them in so they can rob the place, some of the delinquent families. It's a truly a problem here, uh, but much less so than a house. So living in a house here has some tremendous benefits, but also in terms of safety, it's uh, theft. Uh, it's not as convenient, so many people live in apartment buildings and per square meter or square foot, uh, it's more expensive to, uh, to buy an apartment, they say, than a house. Got two questions here. David Brewer asks, how is the barbecue? 
It's very good, actually. Uh, it's, it's different the way they do things here, but you would, if you like barbecue in the U.S., you would like it here. The, the difference is they don't have the same sauces. They don't like that. Uh, well, they don't necessarily don't like it. They just don't use it much, barbecue sauces. But in terms of the quality of meat they throw on the thing and the nice vegetables and stuff they throw up there, fantastic. And, and uh, they also do interesting things with hollowing out little pieces of French bread and sticking them on there with either butter or some kind of vegetables and nestled inside or other kind of filling. Uh, so if you like barbecue in the U.S., you will absolutely love it here. But it is different. It's not the same as barbecues up there. And usually barbecues here are, are, are for bigger groups than we normally have just in the back of a football game or something in the U.S. But they do have barbecues. They're called asados here. Asado. And they always start with an empanada, which is like a, what do they call it? Like, like, looks like a pastry. Uh, half moon pastry or something, but it's filled with, well, it just depends. Could be meat and onions, could be chicken, could be shrimp, could be seafood. Now, for those of you who have been to Taco Bell, they have something there called a caramel apple empanada. Just imagine that, except uh, better, uh, and uh, filled with meat and onions and boiled egg and olives and things like that. So they'll throw that on the asado grill there, but when you get to start, everybody goes and has one of those. They'll throw those on the grill first, and then they throw the little sausages on, and they stick those in those hollowed out French bread too, and you leave those next, and then the vegetables come out, and then at the very end you have the meat, and the wine comes all the way through. So they always have wine with their asados here. It's very common, red wine especially. Now Kurt Simpson says, so I'm being silly, but I just dropped in. Who is driving and talking here sounds very knowledgeable. This is the infamous Dr. John Coben, also known as Dr. Chile. I didn't give myself that. Uh, if you want to see some of his videos, just do a Google or a YouTube search for uh, John Coben, C-O-B-I-N, with Chile. And uh, he has a couple of interviews up there. This section is called Escoil, by the way. It's another nice section of office buildings. Then up to, to the right or to the left of us would have been above this bridge we're going through, the tunnel, semi-tunnel. Uh, you'll, you'll find very elite res uh, residents. Some are large lots, and up, to the, up the hill to the left there, actually, you can't see it from here. There'd be the mansions. Mansions are the best bargain in Chile in the world, they say, because you can literally get 22,000 uh, meters, uh, which is 200,000, is it 200,000 square feet mansions? That's too big. Maybe it's 20,000 square foot mansions. Now, Kurt Simpson says, great to meet you, Doc, and I will let you know that Kurt Simpson is a realtor, actually, in okay. Wallace, North Carolina. Well, mansions here go for 5 to $7 million, and they're unbelievably large. That, that would be 10, 20, 30 times the price if they were in Florida or you know, Boca Raton or somewhere in Beverly Hills or whatever. So, and they, you do live better here if you're even upper middle class because you have a maid and have all the benefits of country clubs and things that are exclusively for rich people in America and Europe. Uh, but you got to come here with some cash and some skills. Making a hundred grand here is really making a lot of money. It puts you into the top 1% of earners in the country easily, I would say. Uh, and therefore, it has lots of benefits. So this area is called San Damian. San Damian is, again, we're close to where the president of Chile lives, and he's on the Forbes billionaire list. Uh, I'll point out his street to you as we drive by it. To get an idea. Phyllis Gillis says, I used to get a chicken and green olive empanada in Canoga Park, but I thought it was Puerto Rican. This is Piñera Street to the right. That's the president. Maybe I'll just turn up and go a little bit. Why not? So do you know about the, the origins of the empanada? As far as I know, empanada is a Chilean national dish that they invented here, but I don't know for sure, so it's just a turnover, that's what we call it, a turnover that's filled with meat, like you said, they have it mixed with onions, they like onions, hard-boiled eggs, olives, one olive, and a bunch of beef, that's the most common one, it's called pino. Then there are cheese ones, solid cheese ones that are deep fat fried, or something close to it, uh, and then there are other kinds, like I said, especially on the coast with different seafood, fish, shrimp. I like the shrimp ones. I also like the chicken ones. Uh, cheese. Phyllis Gillis says, I love the caramel apple empanadas at Taco Bell. Well, if you like those empanadas, I mean, before I went gluten-free, you know, they were all right, I guess, but, I mean, 
here. I can't ever eat one, unfortunately, but uh, it's just nothing in comparison to the quality of the kind of empanada you can get here. In, in spring, when these are all green, this canopy is just marvelous for these old poplar, not, I think they're poplar, I don't know what kind of tree they are, but anyway, uh, they're beautiful. They have them all through Santiago and other cities in Chile, too. Uh, it's, it's remarkable. Some people talk about the smog in Santiago, which is definitely a drag, but they don't talk about how green it is. It's got so many green areas uh, and, and, and so much that uh, is delightful to the eye when there's, especially on a clear day. Not to take anything away from Viña del Mar, because I, I appreciate being able to visit Santiago, but certainly to live, I prefer to live on the beach in Viña. Joshua, okay, he corrected me on the pronunciation of his last name. It's Relier. So Joshua Relier, I apologize. This is San Damian. Piñera vive aquí. First time. Entonces, en los noventas, cuando llegué, me dijo el, el jefe, la universidad, que esta calle tiene el ingreso más grande de per cápita por habitante de cualquier calle en Chile. Este mismo. Y no se nota necesariamente por los edificios, porque hay edificios mucho más grandes, pero aparentemente hay una concentración de riqueza que es importante. Aparentemente. Piñera vive por, no sé, uno de esos aquí, no sé si es ese o otro, yo creo que hay un carabinero allá, siempre hay alguien, pero eso viene acá, por Piñera Street, entre ellos. Si no, we can just go see in there. Might be here, yeah. This, is, this must be Piñera Street. On the right? Yeah, where the cops are. That's why they, they don't let anybody go in there. So is that... La Moneda in there? Or? No, that's just his house. The president oh. does not live in the White House here. Equivalent, he works at La Moneda, and he probably could sleep there if he had to, but it's just an office building. The president just keeps his own place. And since the Chilean president's probably richer than Trump, they're, they're both on the list, uh, they're both pretty fastidious about what they like. You know, so you know, all these cops around here so that is where President Piñera lives. Um, Phyllis Gillis says, I'm sure the authentic far surpasses Taco Bell. Certainly. Joshua Relier says, so what has been the worst part of the move? Worst part of the move here, probably... Uh, Probably when I was at the airport and they told me that I couldn't just have a one-way ticket and they made me buy a return ticket. So I bought a refundable one and, uh, you know, they said immigration would send me back immediately if I didn't have some kind of return ticket, although when I got here, no one ever asked me about it. They don't care if you have a return ticket. That's just nonsense. I've been, been immigrating many people out of America and Europe for many years. It's just not an issue. You're, you're in a place up there where you, you've been enslaved and your, your way of thinking is jaded. You think you live in the land of the free or the home of the native or whatever, but you're, you're not in, that, in the freedom that they used to have there. And so Chile is a relatively free place compared to, to the United States. Dakota Short, thank you for watching. And Kurt Simpson says, nobody is richer than Donald Trump. This is a street called Charles Hamilton, but they don't say Charles Hamilton. Como se dice Charles Hamilton and Car Charles Hamilton? Hamilton? Como se llama? Bueno, uh, it's, it's in English, Charles Hamilton. Entonces, pero yo creo que dicen Charles Hamilton, or algo así. Hamilton. 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 Charles, ¿cierto? Charles. Yeah. That's, that's how you say the street if you're here. You start talking about Charles Hamilton. It's, estamos en vivo en eso, estoy explicando mm -hmm. la gente. Mm -hmm. uh, no one's going to understand, basically. Yeah, yeah, no Take a quick trip up here and then we'll come down. David Brewer asks, are there any English radio stations? Um, Why would there be English radio stations in a Spanish-speaking country? 
Yeah, I haven't found any, um, but that's okay. I, I've listened to uh, Radio Bio Bio a lot, and uh, you know, mainly just so I can practice Spanish because it's mostly a news radio station. We also talk about recipes on there for different food items. The price of permits on the left we just passed, I should have pointed out earlier, they were half a million dollars about five years ago. So probably three quarters of a million now. All of this hill run used to look like, to the, like it is to the right, but nothing there. And then they adopted track homes theory from the United States. And as you'll see as we go up here, you got all sorts of track homes. Esa se llama San Carlos de Joaquín. Who knows it is to the right? And these apartments have been appearing in the last five, ten years. Popping up like uh, this is sell out right away. The real estate market here is much better than being here for all the people that need to for all the people coming in. It's too bad it's not uh, we're already past the fall colors because it's just brilliant up here with the beautiful orange and red. These are gum trees that it can is that right? Most of these. Somebody's courteous. La gente tiene más cortesía cuando está manejando a Santiago que viene. Ya? Sí, sí. Mucho más. En ese sector. Ah, oh. No sé si porque tiene más extranjero o qué, pero la gente es como Estados Unidos. So we have a palm line trees. I had a friend, my best friend, really, who moved here for five years, lived in, I think it was that house we just passed right to this one. And that house is probably about a $300,000 duplex. But it's. Pretty, pretty nice neighborhood. Um, general, then you're in the winter time here. That, that's hard to get used to too if you're in the United States, but we are in the middle of winter. It's not dry here. It's that. It's the equivalent of your January, the middle of your January. Kurt Simpson asks, any major weather or seismic events occur there? I don't have a good feel for the climate or fault lines. I have seen some palm trees, so I assume it gets fairly warm. Well, it's Southern California, so if, if you're not aware of Chilean seismic activity, then you must not follow it too closely because there's probably a few places in the world that are more earthquake prone than Chile. That's why the buildings are built so strong here. We've had 2010, there was an 8.8, .8, not too far, it was felt here certainly, an 8.3 in 2014, and 2015, an 8. It wasn't a key case, right? The other one's way as way, 8.4, 8.3 also. So we have plenty of earthquakes here. We have no hurricanes, tornadoes, just like California. Those those don't occur here. Um, but we hit, and there the Andes range is full of, that's 2,000 volcanoes, 138 are named. Uh, one erupts every 20 months on average. One erupting now in the south. Uh, but there, we don't have, Chile doesn't put population centers, significant population centers, near volcanoes. They learned some time ago that wasn't a good idea. Just like they seem to be learning right now on Hawaii, as I, as I take it from the news. They're, they're sort of nasty things. The only thing that might be worse than a volcano is a tidal wave, which happens in Chile about, on average, once every 150 years. Although there was one in 1960 and one in 2010 that affected a number of places on the coast. So there's your natural disaster summary. Probably won't have another tidal wave in our lifetime or a tsunami. Uh, most likely would have earthquakes since we have them frequently. We're just cruising around the upper class neighborhoods here which are vast in Santiago. Joshua Relier says, I can't learn Spanish because when I speak it I say the wrong things because of the accents, and it has led to an embarrassing birthday wish for someone. LOL. Well, as soon as you stop making excuses for why you choose to live in slavery, you'll be able to overcome those difficulties. 
So all those buildings were, were not even there five years ago. So this is the Cien Cinco Años. It's it's como increíble el crecimiento de las cortes. Y podemos manejar en las cortes por una hora más de una hora. Edificio tras edificio. Muy muy bonito. Es como como ciudad grande es es uno de los mejores ciudades grandes que he visto. No me gusta vivir en ciudad grande, pero Para mí, piña, super, es una ciudad suficientemente grande, ¿cierto? Pero tiene, tenemos todo allá en Viña, pero aquí, pero aquí es una maravilla para la ciudad grande. So you have a good view up here, as you can see, there's visual. And also, this high, we're about 3,000, where we were just a minute ago in the Palm Trees, about 3,400 feet. So, like Southern California mountains, the snow line is often down to around 3,000, not often. Sometimes it gets down to 3,000 feet, maybe even less. And this year especially, it came down to 2,000 feet, which is rare. And the base floor of Santiago, which we're able to see down to the left there, if you're looking through that cloud, um, had snow, and people were making snowballs, and snowman and stuff. It's very rare. Even? We had a saying in Chile that Santiago is Chile. Santiago is Chile. That's because everything else gets almost no funding, relatively speaking. The roads are, are not as nice in other parts of the country. All that is very true. And the power center is here. Uh, it's just a very Santiago center culture. About 7 million in the country, 17 million live in Santiago. And if you had the million from Viña Valparaiso, which is only 150 kilometers away or 100 miles away, um, and Roncagua and Los Andes, the other surrounding far uh, farming communities, were getting pretty close to 9 million people. So that's over half live just right here uh, in this part of, of Chile. Kurt Simpson asks, taxes? I'm basically libertarian in nature, so I'm fascinated. So, sorry, so many questions. Well, why aren't you here if you're a libertarian? Why do you suffer in the United States when a guy making, I've calculated before, a guy making 100,000, I told you he's really doing well here, uh, is going to pay between 9 and 11 percent for all taxes, period. I'm talking about income tax plus value added tax plus car registration. Uh, everything you can imagine. That's nine to eleven percent for the average kind of guy who's got a you know car that you know maybe he's got one you know, Subaru or whatever. That's what he drives around in, or a Chevy truck, and he's, he lives in an apartment for an upper middle class building. That, you know, a nice place and around here where we're driving. So that's all the taxes he pays for everything. So why would you live in a country where you get taxed not only on the gasoline and the income incredibly high, but all sorts of other things. I mean, it's total slavery there. It's not here. You don't file tax returns here. April 15th doesn't exist. If you have to get something back, you can pay a count of 100 bucks and they'll give you some refund, but it, they don't have to do that. People that don't file just for the pleasure of not having to ever file a, a tax return. I used to live on this street. When I, lived, I lived here for this area for about six years. And on this street in particular, for about five, it was a very nice street. It's too noisy, though. I mean, I'd much rather live on the beach, but as far as upper class, nice living, it was pretty pretty special. We lived in this building right here, coming up on the right, the, the red brick one. My wife lived it because there was a Walmart super center called Leader across the way. This was our entrance. That's where I lived. Ese fue mi casa. Yeah. Vivimos allí seis años. En ese mismo. Crossing over the bridge up here, we hit La Deesa. I think what we'll do, you see that leader sign? Walmart came down here and they misspelled leader. They don't put the accent mark on the I. It's misspelled in Spanish, but just to show other good Americans, they're going to spell it the way they please. Accent marks mean nothing in English. It doesn't matter what other languages do, so they just insisted on spelling it wrong. So I've never quite understood why you would do that.
Tulane firemen are all volunteers here. They take a lot of pride in that fact. Charla de cocina del norte aquí. Vamos a hacer una vueltita aquí, un poco más arriba, y volver y tomar cocina del norte a ti. Ron Condon, thank you for watching. Got a lot of people watching today. Well, it's an interesting tour. I mean, how often you get to have a tour northeastern Santiago? We're back on Avenida Las Condes. We back out off Charles Hamilton Street there. This is the road that takes you to the ski area. So from right here, where it says Mall Sport, that's you can get skis there and all sorts of rock climbing and other things you do. Now that's real interesting that this goes to the ski resorts because Ron Condon's son, who's 17 years old, uh, said that he wanted to come this month to Chile, and I discouraged him because I thought he was, you know, too young to be coming here by himself uh, at 17. Why? Because um, I, you know, he doesn't speak Spanish and. All that. So I told him, you know, if he comes next year, uh, I'd be happy to take him up there. Okay. Yeah, they have a bus here. The, the young people, they just, you pay 10,000 pesos, 15 bucks, and you get it. There's a van that's outfits here or something. There's a couple of places on the, on the route here. And they just pick up the kids, they throw their, their skis on the top, and they drive them up at a certain hour. And at a certain hour in the afternoon, they drive them back down. They all have to get back in the same bus. So it's kind of a hands off procedure. And, and lift tickets, are way cheaper than in the U.S. I think youth lift, lift tickets, the last time I paid them were around 25 bucks for the day. So, and yes, reasonable. we have Starbucks. We definitely have Starbucks here. A lot more than that, if you like coffee. <laughs> yeah, there are better places than Starbucks here. I have experienced a few of them. This sector right here is one of the largest Orthodox Jewish areas in Chile. Uh, they live quite peacefully here with Palestinian people, too, uh, by the way. I think right to the right here it might be a synagogue. If I'm, I've been around it once or twice. I don't know if I don't remember it, but there's somewhere here, here there is. That's an interest. The Jewish population is not big here. It's less than 1%. But it's a notorious population because of the people that tend to be very professionals and involved with politics and other things. So the road to the right here is the road to the ski area. That's where it says Centro de Montaña. So that's where you go skiing. But I it's installed. So Ron, when Kyle comes here next year, he'll uh, be taking that road. Ron Condon says, what is the name of the ski resort and Oy Vey? Oy Vey? What is Oy Vey? That's a Jewish... Or a he yeah, it's a Hebrew. Uh, the targets are called La Tarva, Valle Nevada, and El Corral. One is owned by a Swiss organization. I think the other two owned by somebody from Colorado. Because it's it's probably the most important southern hemisphere ski area in the world, right? Also Portillo, which is up the way, up a ways. So people come here off season in the U.S., Canada, etc., to ski way above the tree line. Don't forget about trees; they don't exist in the ski areas here. They have a lot of snow. All right, we're going to turn around. Uh, this is this. We're getting close to the end of Santiago, as you can see. And some people like that; they can live way up here. And although it takes longer to get to places, at least you, uh, by living over here, you, me, you don't. Uh, don't have as much, quite as much smog. It's still here, and you have a, it's a little bit quieter at night, things like that. Here's the Mapocho River, famous. Wouldn't drink it for anything. It's not like there's a copper mine up the way on it. Huh. Who knows what they? I've actually seen the color of the water be a little bit turquoise at once. And I said that that's a good sign for probably. I don't want to drink it, but you would say that probably about every major city's river in the world. So that's nothing special. Ron Conan says that his son wants to go to Portilla. Portilla is the one of, it's, it's actually just as far from Viña del Mar to get there. It's north of here, uh, and it's the most famous of all Chilean ski areas, where the John Claude Keeley set the world's downhill ski record in whatever, 
1965. It's famous for that. And yeah, you can get there from Santiago in about oh, two, two hours maybe, two and a half by bus. Uh, I wouldn't say it's necessarily better than the ones here. They're, both, they're all very good. It's higher, so it might be better in that sense. And then for those of you who have uh, more in-depth questions for Dr. Coben, I encourage you to go on his website, escapeamericanow.info. Uh, sign up to become a member, and you can uh, join the monthly webinars where he answers questions. Well, webinars have been suspended for the time being. I'm thinking about starting them again, but we haven't done them now for a few months. Oh. Did it for many years. I also did a program called Red Hot Chili. Just too busy with doing other things. Uh, I don't mind giving out a certain amount of free information, but sometimes it's just it's too busy. Right now, I'm doing too many activities on Saturdays. They can also just hire me as a consultant, and I'll be happy to spend time with them and talk to them while they have but I imagine, from my experience, that most people will talk about coming to Chile, will never do it because it's too far, their family's there, they got a job up there, they'll have a hundred excuses, or the best one, I want to, you know, die fighting up here to save the land of the free, which is a remarkable statement considering that you've gone downhill every year uh, since I can remember, certainly since Reagan, uh, the United States has changed dramatically for the worse at all times, and I'm not sure that Trump is even an improvement over Obama yet. He might be. He might be an uptick in the range of things. We'll see. Still not good. Ron Condon asks, what is the temperature? I, don't know. I think it's uh, about 53 degrees, if I recall correctly. Uh, maybe 52? It's a typical winter day for Santiago. Pino will be in the low 60s, and Santiago will be in the mid 50s. And the mornings here can be cold, it can be minus Celsius, minus 3, minus 5, but rarely, but it's at about 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. And some, so on some winter days, but most of the time it's not going to be, it'll be in the mid 30s here, and Pino will be in the mid 40s in the morning. Summer in Vigna, rarely over 80. Santiago would get hot. could be certainly over 90 many days, most days, in Fahrenheit, and sometimes over 100. This section of Lobarnache is a lower class section. You can see the vessel in the middle of the upper class area, the pockets of it, although that's really not low, lower class as you've seen other places, but more like middle class. Is that a hot air balloon or what's that up there? Yeah, it's like a weather balloon. Maybe, I don't know. A weather balloon? Yeah, there's, I don't know, got trees in the way now, but uh, there. The auto planet, you have that in the U.S.? Auto planet, not, not familiar with it, so I don't think so. Samuel White, thank you for watching. It's a European well, We're going to get on the road back towards Vigna del Mar now, but there's so much more we could see, but we're just not going to take the time, are we? We've we all got to get back to do things. So um, why don't you give out your, your contact information for anyone watching who might be interested in coming to Chile? Well, you go to escapeamericanow.info, that's helpful. Um, that has most things you want to know there. And the email address is chileadvisorygroup at gmail.com. That should be easy enough to remember. And real quickly, before we end, Ron Condon has one final question. What is the crime rate there compared to cities like Los Angeles? Depends what kind of crime. Uh, this is, we're, we're getting on a freeway called Costanera Norte that was built 12 years ago, just so you can get an idea of the 
modernity of Santiago, uh, Pina has a couple freeways, but it's not as much as here. But before 2000, there really were no freeways in Chile. Uh, hard to, not to speak of, so it's all pretty new. Um, Chile, if you look at the Mercer Index, is the country with the most theft crime in the world. Spain is a close second, as I recall, and sometimes it's first. That's probably because so many Chileans went there, because the country is totally uh, champ, called Champosa. The lying, cheating, stealing are just, I, I don't know what's like an, uh, an epidemic. It's an, it's an epidemic of, of bad behavior. Violent crime is relatively rare. I mean, murder is, is a relative. It's a, and I don't know how low it is compared to but it's, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the, the bottom half of all countries in the world. Uh, rape, probably the same, although there are questionable things like de date rape, you know, where they find out the girl really wasn't raped, who you knows? So they're all included in those kind of statistics, so I don't know what to believe. And the same thing with family violence, which are used as just the stunts that women use to get custody of children. So you see stats on that, but I don't know what to believe about them. I would say that they're Violent crime, in general, though, muggings and stuff are far higher in the United States than here. But petty theft crimes, small embezzlements from companies, uh, are higher here by, by far. So that would give you an idea. Justice, as bad as it is in the United States, might be better than justice here on some things like that, because here the criminals get to go free unless, unless they really stole a lot of money. They just don't have room in the prisons for them. So many people do it. So it's a real problem as far as getting ripped off by somebody for 10 grand or less. Um, violent crime, if that happened, that is prosecuted because they don't have very much of it. This section we're going through is called Dita Cura. And on the other side over here is Las Pompes Inn. All, all these are apartment buildings we're sitting in. Bobby Pinzon and Robert Johnson, thank you for watching. Uh, Joshua Relier has a question again. Uh, is auto insurance required or optional? Optional. Optional? Yes. You have to buy some mandatory one-year policy. I don't think it covers much of anything. It costs $15 when you register the car. It's, I just consider it as a tax. $15 tax. Sometimes you can get a bargain on it, but the firms will sell it for 8 bucks or 10 bucks. But you have to pay that, otherwise you don't have to buy insurance at all. Most Chileans do not buy insurance. I always do, and it's zero deductible policy for my pickup truck. Uh, truly zero deductible. It's about, oh, 85 a month. All right. Well, thank you all for watching. Uh, if you're just now joining us, I encourage you to go back and rewatch from the beginning. We've been touring around Santiago de Chile with Dr. John Coben. Have a good night, everyone.